Check, check, check. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> we have 23 kids today. Record. Up from 18. We have the number three girl chess player in the country, Cherise Woods, top 100, former K3 champion, K5 champion, and K8 champion, Aiden Song. And here we have state champion four times in a row, Mikhail Garland, plus everybody else and we're gonna play seven rounds 23 players it's not that many rounds can't afford that many losses hey i got my popcorn i'm ready to watch hope you guys are excited too let's get into it roper 62 is playing six-year-old little almond tacky element Facing left singing toe. Hello Kid 72 versus Curved Thing. Full empty pajamas. Electric amount. Puzzle Expert versus Pleasant Sugar. Select Fact versus Cool Peaceful Arrow. Top Madhouse versus Roper 10. Cold Lean Leg versus Roper 7. And Combative Design versus Past Empty Room. Uh oh. Oh no. I don't see, uh-oh, let's see what happened here. Oh, Elite Song and Ruddy Puzzle Play, Dark Witty Man has already won. Okay. All right. Hopefully everything runs right today on Chess Kid because there's been bugs and um, there's been kids being kicked out because there's so many people at home right now um, playing. Let's see, I'm getting a message. Okay, everything is fine so far. Elite Song has already beat, won his game against Ruddy Puzzle. Dark Witty Man has won his game, maybe because it's a... He's on a buy. That's probably why. So let's stay around. For those of you who are playing, make sure that you do not leave the screen if it's an odd number of players and you have not been paired yet. It's because you have a buy. Here we go. All right, so Elite Song has already won its first game. Roper7 has just joined the leaderboard, winning his game. Ready Puzzle has a win, actually. And then Dark Witty Man has a win here. Maybe it was an even number. Let's see. Colding Leg. Uh, fun Classic Bicycle? What happened there? Uh, maybe there was a less. She lost that game. Maybe there was a a glitch in the system. Hopefully not. Hopefully that wasn't the case. Let's see. I'm going to look at what happened in this last game with Fun Classic Bicycle. Did she even play? So this is Sharice Woods here. And it says that she lost the game, but let's see. Oh, she played Elite Song in the first round. Oh no. That was a, a tough pairing for the first round. That's something you would want to see in 
pretty much the last round. So let's see how this happened. So we have a Paulson Sicilian. <laughs> Oh, and then there was a fork there. Okay. Ooh. Oh. Oh. And that's what happened here. Oh, man. What a matchup there. Elite Song. And that was, unfortunately, a crush between Elite Song and Plodian number one versus Sharice Woods there. Oh, man. So Sharice starts out with a like a championship game in the beginning of the tournament wow if you want to change the pieces on chess kid maybe you should try the settings All right, I'm getting questions about the pieces. Mikhail is doesn't like the chess kit pieces. They are kind of, I guess, kid friendly. So these are they're teenagers, 17 years old. So they want some more uh, traditional pieces. I don't care. They all move the same way. So if I'm playing, doesn't matter to me. But man, what a what a game between fun, classic bicycle and elite song. That was a. Uh, that was a game there. Um, it was it was over quickly. Surprisingly. Okay. Games that are less. Roper 62. Roper 62 has two championships. Top Madhouse, who is Henry Billings, has two championships. Left Singing Toe has two championships. And then Sour. Uh, what is his name? Tarun Rajis has two championships. The Roper 62 is looking for his third championship. Right now, Little Almond, oh, Little Almond didn't see the check here on F7. And Little Almond was doing pretty good until that point. So now Little Almond, uh, Roper C2 is up a piece, should convert that. Not only up a piece, but up uh, <clears throat> about three minutes in time almost. Go to the next game. Hello Kid and Curve Thing. This is Ro Richie Chowdhury versus Siddharth Menon. Um, White has two extra pawns. Looks like uh, Hello Kid just blundered a knight there. And now it's going to be two extra pawns for white versus a bishop or three extra pawns and one extra pawn. So it's not going to be enough. Curve thing is supposed to be able to convert this position for sure. Rook takes b2 and bishop e4. Should they be able to convert? <clears throat> okay. Um, let's get out of that. Let's go down. Full empty pajamas. This is this is top madhouse, actually. It's really Henry Billings. He created his own account. He played on his little brother's account and won two championships under his little brother's name. Now this is his account here. I mean, I'm eating my popcorn. This is a good tournament today. Friday. Beat Corona Blitz. Looks like Full Empty Pajamas has a pass pawn. And there will be no upset in this game. Okay. Let's go down. Puzzle Expert versus Pleasant Sugar. Pleasant Sugar is the highest player against Puzzle Expert. And Puzzle Expert is doing an excellent job here. We see that he's down one pawn. But he is... He's hanging in there. So this is the... Out of all the games we've seen, this is probably the closest game here. He has a decision whether to trade. He doesn't trade. But then he gives up the B3 pawn.
And maybe like rook a5. So now puzzle expert is down two pawns and oh peasant sugar wins on time. All right. Let's go down. Let's go back to Hello Kid and Curve thing. This is a game. Oh, what happened? Oh. Looks like Curve thing is just winning this game here. And Hello Kid could resign. Hello Kid is 1483 against Curve thing who is 12 12. So this is a big upset here. What is Curve thing doing? Why did he give that pawn up? I don't know. But so now, what? Still, this is a winning game, mainly because if I trade this H2 pawn for the G pawn and leave you with a H pawn, it would be a draw if the bishop was not the same color as the queening square, which is H1. So, but it is. For instance, if this was a dark square bishop and I was able to trade the H for the G pawn, it would be a draw. But in this case, it's not, so <clears throat> this should be a easy win. As long as curve thing does what he's supposed to do. Uh oh, gotta watch it. Okay. Now, if he pushes this pawn to G2, it's a, it's a stalemate, so he stayed away from that. Check. Okay. So that was an excellent way to stay away from the stalemate. Good. And now he's just going to grab a queen. Okay. And curve thing wins. All right. Here we go. Round two. What matchups do we have now? Roper 7 versus Roper 62. Left singing toe versus combative design. This is uh, Samat Samrat Zagade, Zagade versus Rhea. Oh, no, no. Adi Azale. Uh, Aiden Song, a leaked song, will be playing Siddharth Men and Curve thing. Who just won that game. Todd Madhouse. This is Elijah Billings versus his big brother, Henry Billings. That's a sibling rivalry. Pleasant Sugar, up and coming uh, K3 player. Uh, top one, former top 100 player in the nation versus Dark Witty Man, which is Mikhail Garland. So this is like a 1200 versus 1700 in real life. Uh, Ruddy Puzzle, Aryan uh, Kedar, one of the top uh, uh, third graders in the state versus Rishi Chowdhury. And we have Noah Gibbs from the Roper School versus Puzzle Expert at Yoth, Sarah. And then we have Sharice Woods, Fun Classic Bicycle versus Shavank Jayadeva from the famous Troy Barnard Championship chess team. And then we have Little Almond, the youngest of the bunch, six years old, versus the up and coming killer, Ishant Patak. Patak. And then we have Cold Lean Leg versus Tanoosh. Cold Lean Leg. I got to see who this is again. Hold on. Cold lean leg. Just want to see who this is. Let's see. Oh, okay. This is Fei Young. This is our new Implodian here. He's moved here from Texas, I believe. He was he was there. So this is his second time playing here, and he's playing Tanoosh here. 
All right, so we can we started his game. Three pieces, everything is the same. So black has an extra pawn. Okay. And black has this really nice bishop on this long diagonal. Got to watch. Like moves like queen g5 later. But white has two two uh, files to put rooks on, even though he's down a pawn. The good thing about being down a pawn, the positive thing is he has two files to use for his rooks, where black only has the one. So he goes to trade off the long bishop. That might be a good idea. Even though you're trading down material, that bishop is so strong, it's probably a good idea to trade that. <clears throat> he goes knight there. I'm anticipating. Okay. Queen f6. That was a big blunder because a queen takes d7. And look at that. White misses the knight there. Oh, that was such a big blunder by, by black and then by white. Unprotected knight sitting right there. No one takes time enough to see the material. Okay. So this is still... Um, black is slightly better because of the extra pawn. But if, if white could kind of dominate the d-file... He can have enough counterplay to make up for the pawn. So here he created, well, he created a, a pawn here on d6, but then white has a back receipt pawn. So I'm going to say black is much better in this position. So let's go to another game. Has anyone won yet? No, no one has won yet. Let's go and look at elite song versus curve thing. Now, Lee Song is one of our, our guest stars on the Beat Corona Blitz number eight. Um, he is white here. And actually, we look at this position. Curve thing is okay. He has a bad bishop. Um, but it looks like he has this open file here on the C file. But what he has to do is he has to watch it because of this, this king over here has no defenders. You have a bishop that's pointing to this area. You're threatening rook takes h6 because the g6 pawn is pinned. And now here he plays this move where all white has to do is take en passant. And that's going to really damage the whole pawn structure around the king. For instance, you take en passant, he's threatening checkmate. He's, the bishop is opened up even more. There's no light square pawn there. He's threatening queen to, um, to g6. And now, look, Siddharthus gives up checkmate. Maybe that was nerves, but uh, that move F5 really hurt the uh, curve thing there. All right, so let's go on. Elite Song has two quick victories already. Come on, guys. You can't let Elite Song, Aiden Song, come into our house and just win all the games. Who's going to be the first one to upset Aiden Song? Let's go. <clears throat> all right. Roper 7 versus Roper 62. Now, I think this is... Oh, Roper 62 looks like he has this in control. He has three extra pawns and a rook. So there will be no upset here. <clears throat> All right. Let's look at left singing toe versus combative design. Left singing toe has won two championships already. Playing combative design. And right now, it is even. And... I will say this about combative design. If anyone you have to worry about getting upset, it is her. Rhea Desai is an attacking monster. If you leave your key, king in the center with any tactics, Rhea Desai has no problem in going for your throat. So this is a, but right now it's an end game and I would favor left singing toe when there is a end game position here. This is not what Rhea Desai is used to. She's gotten better at playing in games um, um, recently. But as far as being having that um, that feel for in games, left singing toe, this is his wheelhouse. He's won uh, countless uh, in games, equal positions, uh, um, up upon positions, rook in games on the uh, best on the blitz or uh, beat Corona blitz tournament series. Now, I will say this, Rhea is doing good. Rhea has the best minor piece. The bishop is going to cover both squares. 
But what Rhea has to do is try to help this bishop out on the control of these squares. For instance, like these are dark square pawns. If we can lock these pawns on dark squares or maybe even play a5, a4, maybe even a3, keeping these pawns on dark squares, then you always have targets for the bishop in the long run. So this is, I would, I would favor black in this setup as well. Also stopping the knight's advanced squares is another good uh, idea as well. So I think Rhea is really playing good here. If she can kind of, maybe she should play like a5 here. I like her position a lot. Also get your king in the game. So that's something like king f8. Get ready to, get ready for an end game where the king is going to be a fighting piece as well. So when you have end games, look at left singing toe. He ha he's definitely a veteran. He knows how to get his king in the game. And so should Rhea. Rhea should bring that king towards the center because the fight is coming. Now, maybe Rhea wants to trade off rooks to have a, a pure bishop versus knight situation, which is actually a smart thing to do when pawns are on both sides of the board, especially if you can lock the pawns on dark squares to take advantage of having a dark square bishop. So we'll be back. We'll come back to this, I guess. This was probably one of the best matchups here. Let's see if anything else. Pleasant Sugar versus Dark Witty Man. Now, this is a good matchup here. Dark, oh, well, maybe not. Dark Witty Man is up three pawns in this game. And this looks like this is going to be a win for Dark Witty Man. Another guest star that we have today. Um, Ruddy Puzzle versus Hello Kid. Hello Kid. Hello Kid is the highest rated player here. But look. Oh, Hello Kid is black. It looks like some sacrifices are going on here. And what's happening? So if King takes H1... That's it. Wow. So here, yes, king takes h1 and queen g1 check. And that was a excellent, excellent attack there. Hello Kid holds on to win that game. Roper 10 versus puzzle. Oh, that looks like that's over already. Now we have uh, coaling leg versus, let, let's go top madhouse versus full empty pajamas. Brother versus brother. Looks like full empty pajamas is... Just beating up on his little brother again. Nothing different. Henry, leave little Eliza alone. And Eliza only has the king, so that's, that looks like a win for Henry. Um, or full empty pajamas. Now here, Cole Ling Leg, which is Fayun, is looking like he could draw the game against uh, Tacky Element if he plays the correct way. Um, and I think this is a draw, and that would be a pretty good result for Cole Lean Leg, seeing that the rating difference is over 200 points. <clears throat> and this should be a draw. Okay, let's go back to Left Singing Toe, Combative Design, and this end game. So right now, Oh, it looks like she lost a pawn here. Okay. So she loses this pawn. Now she's thinking of what she should do. She's down three minutes on the clock. Trying to figure out how can we dominate the, the knight on the side there with the bishop. There's a check. We can go king. Yeah. <clears throat> Probably going to play a4 so the king is free to move. Hmm. Maybe you could play like, yeah, bishop to d2. I wouldn't get rid of this pawn because this pawn stops the knight from going to d4. So I will let him take and I will take back. And maybe I'll play bishop d2. How can we do this?
Yeah, this Apon is going to be a problem as far as a passer is concerned. Yeah, I would say that the left thingy toe has definitely maneuvered his knight better than her bishop in this situation. And now she's running out of time. She did play bishop d2. So I'm going to guess he's going to go b takes c5 and b takes c5. Okay. Right? And then b takes c5 should be played. Oh, she wasn't able to play it in time, so a little time there. Any more games? Nope. That's it. Now we headed to round three. So the leaders is Roper 62, Elite Song, Full Empty Pajamas, Left Singing Toe, and Dark Witty Man. All the highest players. And then Hello Kid, Curved Thing, Top Madhouse, Roper 7, Pleasant Sugar, Select Fact, Fun Classic Bicycle, Combative Design, Little Almond, Electric Amount, Ruddy Puzzle, Pass Empty Room, Tacky Element, Colleen, Needy Cinema. I didn't even know Needy Cinema was in here. Determined Octopus, Board Shark Puzzle Expert, and Cool Peaceful Arrow. Okay. I didn't know Needy Cinema was in here. Did he have a buy? Yeah, he had a buy, I guess. Wow. All right, so we have Roper 62 versus Elite Song. This is the Roper School. Two of the highest players in the Roper School are playing each other right now. They have never played each other in a real game. Elite Song is pulling out the Tamanov Sicilian. I guess uh, Roper 62 played the Knight B5 variation, which is considered to be not as good as others. This is going to be a really good game here. Mm. All this is theory. Usually what white wants to do now is play f4, maybe bishop f3 to control d5, or queen e1 to bring his queen over to the king side and start to attack. So f4 happened here. Black plays d6 to control e5. And then like queen e1 or bishop f3 should be the move here. Sometimes you will see knight take c6, but this is not a good move. You're just trading when you're up in space. <clears throat> Makes no sense to do that. So there's queen a1. He's going to be headed to e4. I mean, g3. Okay, bishop d7 is the move. Hmm. I would like that bishop more so on b7, but I guess it does make some sense. Now here he wants to play, I guess, f5 and bishop h6. But I wonder if we have time to go b5 and then b4 right here we also have knight takes d4 as well so got some options here for black but white is better with these two pawns here for sure <clears throat> this is a top level game here both players are playing theory up until this point, just like Grandmasters would be playing. This position has been played thousands and thousands of times. So he did go b5. The plan is to go b4 and then kick away the knight from the defense of the e4 pawn. 
So maybe here, bishop f3. <clears throat> maybe. I don't know, bishop f3, we have b, <clears throat> then we have b4, okay. So I wonder if I could play b4 anyway, and then knight takes b4, threatens the c2 square. That looks possible. But then again, there is a, there's gonna be an a6 pawn that's gonna be unprotected too. Uh, this is a critical decision here. He does play b4. Maybe it's because, okay, so after take, knight takes, then we have rook takes a6. He can go rook takes, bishop takes, and maybe queen a7. Also, oh, he takes there first. Okay, that was interesting because now you have two attackers on the e4 pawn here, and that might not be something he wanted to do. So now if you go like knight takes e4, <coughs> knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, threatening the c2 pawn. Yeah, there's a lot of trades here. But now the space advantage from white doesn't mean as much anymore. You gave up your center pawn. You have pawn structures doubled here. <clears throat> Weak c2 pawn here. Maybe the play is actually to play c3. That looks good. And then here maybe d5 could be played or, oh, you might want to defend this. So after c3, I wonder if we could play a5 here. So a5 after rook takes a5, rook takes a5, b takes a5, and then queen takes b2. That looks really good. So a5 looks like a good move to play. You can play a5 and then you can play b5. Is that pass pawn gonna be a problem? Hmm. I don't know. It could be. So a5, b5 is the move. Could play queen b7. That's possible too. <clears throat> Man, this is gonna be a good game here. Sicilian game. He does play a5, but I was looking at b5 here. Yeah. Maybe here you play, now you play d5. So you can't play c4 and have a protected pass pawn. Maybe that's his plan to play d5 and actually play a4 and a3 and push his a4 pawn and cause weaknesses on the queen side. Make this pawn a backward pawn actually with d5, a4, a3, rook c8. That looks like a good play. So that's what Aiden does. D5, that's excellent. Ooh! This can't turn away from this game. Okay. Are there any other good games? We have full empty pajamas versus left singy toe. <clears throat> um, two rooks and a knight, two rooks and a bishop. There is seven pawns here versus six pawns. But white's position here. Whose move is it? Black to move, white is straightening, queen takes g6. But that might not be enough here because you just lost the knight. 
Oh, I wonder if he could have played Rook H. Looks like he could have played Rook H3. And that looked like that could have been a problem. Rook H3. You were threatening checkmate here with Rook H. That could have been a problem. Okay. So he stops that. Okay, so now he wants to go check and win another pawn, but you're gonna really give up this pawn. It doesn't look like. Maybe it's a draw, maybe. So queen check, who I doubt it's a draw because the king gets to go to d7. Wow, you do have rook to, oh, it could be. This could be a draw. If you play f6 and I take with check, uh-oh, rook d3. That looks like game over. Rook d3. What? Oh, no. You had rook d3. Do you, you let him go to this file. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. What a big miss from full empty pajamas to let him cross the file. Right here, if you play rook f to d3, where can he go? He can only block with the queen, and then you go rook takes d4, and that's it. Checkmate in two moves. Oh, man. What a blunder there. So full empty pajamas misses his opportunity here. Big time. Now, I guess he can go check. Oh, can you do that? Check, and then rook takes. Nope. Nope. He missed his opportunity there. Okay. Um, Dark Witty Man versus Hello Kid. What's going on here? Look like Hello Kid is losing that game. Um, let's go with. Um, all right. So we gotta go back to the higher games here. Let me go back here. Roper sixty two versus Elite Song. What's happening here? Okay, now it looks like they still tied up in material. Question is, is this pawn weak or is it strong? Mm hmm. Hmm. So he's trying to surround this pawn here. Getting hard to do that. This might be one of those situations where you might want to sacrifice a rook for a bishop here if you're black. Lee Song is down in time. He plays a four here. Very interesting, why? If bishop takes. Hmm. So Roper 62 has 43 seconds. <coughs> okay. What's the plan here? If I play bishop b3, okay. I don't know, maybe bishop d8. Okay, he wants to open this position up. I guess he wants to play d4 here. And he has to watch that because we can go f takes e5, queen takes e5, and a bishop f4. And in bishop f4, you move away, and then you can't stop the queening square. So that looks like this. Bishop f4 looks winning. Bishop f4 mixed with... I think. Oh, no, because you, you have rook takes. Okay. 
And then rook c8, maybe. <clears throat> 20 seconds left. Okay. Threatening h2. Can you... Threatening h2 here. So what if you play bishop to d3? Queen takes h2, bishop d3. Oh, what did he do there? Wow, this looks... Oh, he really missed that queen takes h2. Uh oh, queen takes f7. And oh, and in queen g8. Ah, man. Roper 62 beats Aiden Song. Oh, big upset there. Okay, uh oh. Now we're, now the leaders are. Roper 62 is three for three. Left Singing Toe, three for three. Dark Witty Man, three for three. Tacky Element, two and a half out of four. Ooh, good result for him. Elite Song, two out of three. Wait, two and a half out of four? He has a buy or something? I don't know. <clears throat> Elite Song, two out of three. Full Empty Pajamas, so. Things are shaking out. Fun Classic Bicycle, she's on her way back because of that first loss to Aiden Song. Uh, where is Needy Cinema? Needy Cinema. Needy Cinema is one out of four? Very easy. That's very interesting. Okay. Roper62 is in first place. <clears throat> and he is playing Left Singy Toe. Dark Witty Man and Elite Song are playing there. So let's look at the game. Roper 62 versus Left Singing Toe. Both of these players have two championships each. They're battling to be the first player to win three beat Corona Blitz championships. Here we see like a, a Dutch defense, kind of like a Leningrad Dutch defense. Just controlling the e4 square. And here he takes on e4. I don't know about this decision. Maybe you can go knight d2. Now the bishop on c8, it's a bad bishop now, but you can always bring it to a6 to trade it off for another piece. Maybe c takes d4, c takes d4. Okay. Place d5 here. He's really going for space here in the center. f6, an excellent move. <coughs> Attacking those center pawns here. So this game is still in the balance. Let's go to Dark Witty Man, Mikhail Garland versus Aiden Song. Hello. Sorry. Sorry. Don't 
Dark witty man is what's happening here? He's up upon, looks like. How did this occur? Okay, I guess it was right there. I guess it was right there. There's a potential for a sacrifice on B4. And then you will have three Past pawns, actually. Can't sneeze at that, uh, that possibility. Knight takes b4, pawn takes b4, and then queen takes b4 check. Then the king can't castle, then you have three past pawns. So maybe here, rook a5, and then rook a1, doubling the rooks on that file. Take advantage of the missing pawn there, and the bad knight that's on a6. There it goes. <coughs> Queen would go to probably d7. Oh no, c6. Ooh, wait, that's gonna be tough. Where does it go? Because if queen d7, you have bishop takes c4 because the only pawn that guards the e4 square is the pawn on d5 and he can't guard both. Well, here he can play bishop takes d5, I mean bishop takes c4 right now. <clears throat> the problem is after bishop takes c4, he doesn't have to take back. He can bring his rook to c8 and then of course if the bishop move, then rook takes c2, c, c3. So it doesn't quite work. So here I would just play rook a1 and hold the position, have two rooks on open file. So I actually believe white being down the pawn is white is better here in this position. But he goes for this. It, I don't even I don't think this works. I really don't. Yeah. So here it looked like he's going to probably have to bail out and give up the rook or he's going to have his whole position crumble where rook takes c3 or knight takes c3 once he... Oh, he can go bishop takes a6. Okay, so he does, he can go get away with that. Bishop takes a6 is okay because if rook takes c3, you have queen a2. All right, so that must have been his plan there. But still, he, he gave himself a back response. Now it's not there anymore, but... And then what, queen a4? Probably. I like, okay, because he can go bishop. He can go bishop takes b4, but he goes take on, or he takes a6. So let's say rook takes a6, queen takes b4, rook takes a7, and it look like we're going to be winding up in an equal position. So he holds that there. Then we have like rook a1, I guess. I guess we can't do that though. Rook a1, you don't threaten to take it because of the back range um, problems. Now he's threatening bishop takes b4. Maybe you should play b5. And maybe even b5, the threat of b6 actually. So I think b5 is the best move here.
Okay. Hmm. Hark with is trying to find out what he should do here. I wonder if he can just go bishop to... I hate to take the bishop off of that diagonal. A3, F8. Maybe we go D8 and then bishop on B6. Okay, so he goes ahead and trades that. Does he see a sacrifice on F1? Maybe. I don't see it. There's no checkmate. So there is checkmate threatened. That didn't really help. Oh, yeah, I guess it did. Okay. So he moves his king over, so queen e8 stops checkmate. What about bishop to e5, threatening bishop takes g7? Knight to e5, threatening knight to d7. So that's what he does. He goes knight to e5. Making sure this doesn't work. Queen takes f1. King takes f1. Rook c1 check. King to e2. Rook c2 check. No. That should not work. <clears throat> or if it's not checkmate, maybe you can play. Because I think it might be checkmate. So check here. No, I don't think this is checkmate. I don't think so. So here he can play knight d2. And this looks bad. Oh, but I see what he's doing, though. His uh, Aiden's threat is queen a8 check, queen e8, and then knight to d7. Ex exclam! Exclamation move. Ooh, that's his threat. So knight d2 will definitely lose, okay? So you still can do it, right? I don't know, can you? So you have queen a8 check, queen e8, knight d7, king f7, and do you have any good discoveries? Don't look like it. Maybe just go queen a1. Or queen a5 hitting the rook. Oh, he just takes that. Oh, wait a minute. This knight is trapped here. Oh, but he's going to play... I guess he's going to play f3. What is he doing? Oh, he just, he just did that because he's low in time. f3... Knight d2, rook d1, hmm, take, take, oh, he took that, <clears throat> I don't know why he would take that, okay, He protects this. So this is four pawns versus four pawns. I think black is better. He's going to have the better king and better pawn structure. But if white could get his king to f3, he could play. Oh, that helps. So we take there. And now we can play g3 and h4 at the right time. Now, you probably Aiden probably needs to let this pawn go and get an active rook, actually, if he could. Okay, I don't, I don't believe that this is the best place for this king. So Mikhail is going to come around here and double team the pawn on c4. If he finds that plan. 
All right, we've spent a lot of time. I want to know what happened in this left singing. Okay, oh, what happened? Roper wins that game. Roper six to a steal in first place, four out of four. King F3, okay. Now here comes the, <clears throat> the king, he's coming to C4. So now what I would do is I would play something like G4 and then bring my rook around and, and take on B on G5. So if I play G4 now, even if you take, take, this pawn is hanging. So even though I know I can't stop you, you eventually will come around and play C4. I'm going to have an active rook and come around and take on G5. <clears throat> so Aiden does it this way. He wants to give up here and then take there. Okay. All right, so still it's very important to have an active rook here. Now that, I like this move here by Aiden. This is nice. This is this is uh being a veteran here. Cuz he got beat by Roper 62 and now he sees that it's real. And this might have surprised Mikhail uh the way he played here. It might have. Now he could play rook to e4. And I wonder what the, the move is there because after rook takes e4, we could take here <clears throat> and then take and then king steps up. But then he gets this passer that I don't believe. Let's see, with rook e4, we take, take, take. He pushes, we take, he pushes, he's gone. All right, so rook e4 is a pretty good move. But then we could play G, G3. So rook e4, G3, h takes, king takes, and it's just a draw. Should be a draw. But what is he doing? He's down nine seconds, seven seconds. And Dark Witty Man is taking his time. And what did he what did he look at there? I don't see what he he thought he was seeing here. <clears throat> so now Aiden is gonna try to win a game like this. Rook e4 is coming, so the question is: can he get back in time? Maybe King g1 for sure. King g1 for sure, or rook f4. There goes king g1. Okay, that was an unnecessary check, I believe. Okay, and then rook f4. I don't know what dark witty man is doing here. <clears throat> I believe he had the, I think he had the position for a draw. But now I believe he's kind of made it hard on himself here. So he's cutting off, but that's not going to do anything. Push, and then the rook comes behind the pawn. <clears throat> and now there's trouble. And now you just want to move your king up and... Right, and protect the pawn here and go around to... <clears throat> he did it kind of weird. He could have went down. Oh, but then... Mikhail didn't stop the king from... Also, he wants to protect the pawn. Oh, this is, this is a big turnaround. This would have been a draw position. And Mikhail has made it to where this is a lost position here. Now, I think that Mikhail, Aiden probably shouldn't have went for this. Um, oh, well, maybe he can. Now you could take, and then there's just a win here. <clears throat> so, wow. So that puts, uh, that makes things kind of sticky. Roper 62 is still in the lead. Elise Song is number two. Left Singing Toe is number three still. So the, the normal Implodians are still holding it down in the top three. Aiden Song is in there. Full Fun Classy Bicycle, who lost the first game to Aiden Song. A terrible matchup. Has won three straight, so she's number four. Dark Witty Man is three out of four. Full Empty Pajamas, three out of four. Pleasant Sugar has came back. And now he's three out of four. Um, there's one that I don't get. Packy Element, Roper 7, Curve Thing, Ready Puzzle, Select Fact, Combative Design, Electric Amount. And I'm going to say Roper 10, Coding Leg, Top Madhouse, Puzzle Expert, Cool Peaceful Arrow, 
Determined Octopus, Strange Boat, Hello Kid, Needy Cinema is last. I don't believe Needy Cinema is playing. But that's what I'm thinking is happening here. There's no way Needy Cinema is playing these games. He's one of the top uh, third graders in the whole country. No way. All right, so we have Dark Witty Man versus Roper 62. This is a good matchup here. Roper 62 is number one. I believe that the, excuse me, the ones Roper 62 has to beat Dark Witty Man and a fun classic bicycle. And he should clinch his uh, championship if he's able to do that. Might get challenged from Pleasant Sugar maybe, but those are the top dogs that he has to beat. So this is an important game, especially with the black pieces. So we'll come back to this. This is important. They're not going to make too many mistakes in this game. <clears throat> Let's go to Fun Classy Bicycle. She was right on the bottom in the beginning, losing to Elite Song. And now she's playing Left Singing Toe, who's third place, I believe. She has white, and she's up a pawn here. How did this happen? Let's see. It was a French. Oh, she just plays Bishop D3. I like that. She controls, she's, oh no. Actually what happened is she had to sacrifice her piece because she got it trapped. So she's down a piece for a pawn. Wow. But you know what, in a position like this, the board is saying screaming D5. D5 was the move there, screaming D5. You have to open the position up when this king is in the center. He's two tempos away. In this position, d5 is the move. Open this position up as much as you can, especially since you're down a piece. Because right now, the bishop and rook are not participating. So she had to play d5 and get aggressive here. d5, knight takes e5, rook e1. Definitely should play. And then now, even more so, should play d5 now. I guess knight takes e5 would attack her queen, so that makes it different. This is an okay move because she stops the development of the bishop. One thing I would say about Sharice Wood, she is creative. She has really high tactical acumen. Okay, so here, a a4 looks like a good move, but d5 is the move. Come on now. d5 is the move. This is also a move. This is... Even though Jesus could be played. I will say that Jesus could be played. Maybe I don't like it as much anymore. Now she just goes back. She should have thought about that too. Maybe she doesn't go back. Maybe she goes knight f6 check. And that probably wouldn't be as good either. D5. Come on. D5. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with you guys? Play it. Open the position up. If you want to prepare it, put the rook there. Rook d5. It's fine. So even though white is down a piece, man, this bishop on c8 is trash. And this rook is never getting in. So this is, uh, I might favor white down the piece in this position now black is ready to castle and things are going to change here but i don't know if you want to castle with all these pieces surrounding the king here i mean i think you can i would play i'd play like knight b6 to d5 here knight e7 is also a good move knight f5 and knight d5 and, you, and then now, now you can see the future of the bishop like moving the bishop to b7 and once black is able to unravel this bishop on c8 
it's going to be over. Nice weak square to sit a piece on on F5. This is nice. This is nice here. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if we have to trade here. Man, we might because the knight h6 check. Maybe. Oh, still not out of the water, left singing toe. Oh, my goodness. Down a piece, but this is how you, you, you act when you're down a piece, being really, really aggressive, especially with that king in the center. Even though, Sharice, you should have played d5 earlier. Man. Okay, so that's a check. And now the king has to stay in the middle. So here I'm thinking that maybe you can do queen c6, queen g7, bishop b7, Queen takes uh, f8 and then King e7 wins because the rook is attacking the queen and you're threatening checkmate. But Sharice is really making up for oh she's gonna it's gonna be Bishop b7. Should we have taken this pawn? I don't know. Now it looks like Black is gonna organize in a good way. So here's Teresa's headed to, I know she wants to head to the F6 square. <clears throat> but black is gonna get castle here. And left singing toe is defending his group, the Implodians, against these monster star players. <laughs> This is a big one because Cerise is 1900 in real life and left singing toe is about 1600. Okay. Maybe queen g3. Knight d5, threatening knight e3. So now the piece is not a bishop, it's a monster on this open diagonal. 93, that's a fork. <clears throat> that is a fork there. Maybe she can play queen to f3. It's something unique here. Knight d6 check. Rook takes d6. And then um, e takes d6. Bishop takes f3 and then e takes e7. I mean, d takes e7, but hmm. he's just trading. He's up a rook. He can play rook h4. He wants some more trades. <laughs> oh, man. Left singing toe is a technically sound. Technically sound. All right, so let's go somewhere else. Left singing toe is winning this game against fun classic bicycle here. The number three girl in the whole country. Um, Dark Witty Man versus Roper 62. Let's go back to this game. What's happening? Um, there is even material here if I count right. Yeah. I think what happened with these the star guest stars, they thought that it was going to be an easy cakewalk, and guess what? Wake up! It's not. Because <laughs> you guys have been playing all week, so you guys are like blitz demons right now. I, I would guess bishop to f6 with the pin. Making this bishop better. Um, 
goes queen d7. H3, knight of six. Okay. Oh, you now you have bishop takes g5, actually. So that might have been a mistake. Or is it? Bishop takes d5 and knight takes d5. Hmm. Nope. Okay. Okay, so he covers that. It goes bishop takes f6. And then what? Knight to e3. Oh, e4. You do open up this f file. I don't know if you really wanted to do that. What's happening here? Oh, he's attacking the knight two times here. That's, these are the moves that I think surprises, surprises the higher players here. That these kids can actually, they have some really good moves here. He noticed it. A takes B5. If Dark Woody Man, Dark Woody Man is up by so much time here as well, that it's going to be hard for Roper 62 to make correct decisions here with his 20 seconds, even though there's five second increment. Hmm. Now you have a backwards a7 pawn here. Now I wonder how you're going to take here. You would probably go, yeah, rook takes e4. Oh, knight takes d6. Didn't even see that. So this is a fork here. Uh, the queen is defending the bishop, but taking away that bishop on this long diagonal, he did have the bishop here. Now he's threatening bishop takes f2. He has to watch that. Huh. Rookie two covers that up. Okay, and now I think he can just play knight takes b7. Or would he go rook takes, yep, he goes knight takes b7, queen takes, he wants to, he's threatening queen e6 check, I guess. And this doesn't look good for roper 62, he has to move somewhere. And now we have queen e6 maybe. See, and this is chosen veteran, uh, um, dark weedy man is taking his time. <clears throat> Instead of just making a quick move, he sees queen takes g3 as an option. So I wonder if he just plays something like queen g4 and gets it over with. You can trade that. Wow. So queen takes g3. Oh, he misses that. Queen takes g3 was an option. Oh, I see why. Because a queen takes d4 would be the move. So it doesn't work. Queen takes d4 and maybe, oh, but maybe queen takes g2. No, no. Yeah, yeah. So that did work. It was, it was a lot of tactics in there. h4, and I wonder if he could do it now. So that's a pawn here. Oh, but we take it with check. That's the key. So queen takes d4 with check that's the key where before it wasn't a check when it's on g8 so queen takes d4 check c takes d4 and then f takes g3 the bishop covers and the queen king covers the rook that's a that's a free piece will dark witty man see this he has nine seconds and what did he do there Whoa, that looks very, that looked very unnecessary. Wow. Maybe he thinks that his pawn, past pawn is going to be good enough, but that was a big blunder by, by him there. Big blunder. 
And also, this is a blunder too. He should have probably established his bishop on f5. Wow. Maybe king goes? No. Wow. Big blunder there. Not being able to see queen takes d4. And Roper C2 is in the driver's seat here. And this is just going to be a matter of time. This bishop is terrible. Should have been outside the pawn chain, if anything. I, I'm going to expect king to f3. Still a pass pawn there. So he's going to come from behind. How does he reroute his bishop to a better diagonal? That's my question. So he tries that. He's trying to hold everything, I believe. It's going to be hard here. Okay. Go there. Whoa. He had a rook check. He's not going for that. Check there. Okay. King steps here. This is not looking good, but it is a time is low here, so it's easy to make a mistake here. Oh boy. Who's the bishop back? Now you have a pass pawn that you can push yourself. C4 and C3. But it gets more pawns here. Hmm. He's racing here. Can he get there in time? Ooh, no. So all we have to do is sacrifice our queen on the last pawn and that's it. And then you can say rook takes d5. That's it. Wow, what a blunder here. Oh, he's going to go for checkmate with king f6 and boom, game over. Mmm. Wow, what a blunder. Wow, what a blunder by Dark Witty Man and... That's what Roper had to do. He had to finish. Um, now, he only has one more obstacle, I believe. That's it. So, fun classic bicycle. If who, man, I guess she won that last game. Uh, well, I should have switched to that game. How did she come? Wait, how did she come out of that? Or maybe she didn't. Maybe she didn't. No, she did not. Or maybe it was a draw. Wow, she drew that game. That's amazing. At least Song is still number two. And if, man, if Fun Classic Bicycle beats Roper 62, then Elite Song could leapfrog. It's going to be very tight here. Left Singing Toe versus Elite Song right now. That's a matchup. Okay, whoa. So here we go. Fun classic tricycle. Has our king in the center. What was this? Wow. So here she is down a pawn, but the what happened is this is an end game here. Take, take. And she has this nice knight that's headed to d4, I guess. This is an interesting end game. I believe, still believe it's good for white because these pawns on the c file are just there for targets. For instance, I could play g4 and bishop to g2. That's the first pawn that's a target. And then you got a bishop. Oh, I see. 
So if you go bishop takes c4, knight e3 comes, but I can play, well, I guess I can play, <coughs> I was wondering if you could play g4, oh, <coughs> oh, okay. So that's what he was planning on doing here. Knight takes g2. <coughs> There's another pawn that's going to leave. <coughs> Excuse me. Rook takes g2. Oh, this is looking bad here. Now he's threatening checkmate here. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Wow. Roper 62 is dominating <laughs> dominating here <laughs> in this tournament that's pretty much it folks i don't know who will hit be his next challenger seems like he's played all the top players um one more round left let's see who could he play he's beating the lead song left singing toe fun classic bicycle and Dark witty man, maybe full empty pajamas. Let's see, a left singing toe versus elite song. Okay. So Lee Song playing this line is a good line. Right now, I believe he should play. Oh, this is a good move. Trying to win the bishop here, here. But also, I think he should play. You know that b3 is coming, and this pawn that's on uh, c4 is just actually a weak pawn with b3. Maybe he can, he can play rook c8 to make up for it. But I would play queen to d8, because after b3, I would play b5 and keep my pawn chain the way it is. Because this pawn chain is stopping the bishop going to d3, the knight going to e4, so it's a pretty strong pawn chain here. But here he doesn't, he doesn't really notice it, so he could play it. So b3 could be played here, and it's gonna break down this whole pawn chain here and free up white's pieces. Here it goes. So if queen d8 was played, you can play b5, and if a4, a6, and then all the, the pawn chain would stay intact. But now it's going to crumble away. <clears throat> and now he's free. And rook c8 could have been a deterrent as well. So rook c8 probably would have been better than queen d8, because after b3 and after take take, you had it was like knight b4, and the bishop you see is already controlling c2. So like rook c8 right now is a good move. Rook c8, he can play queen b2. Rook c8, maybe queen b2 here. What 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 a tournament here. What a tournament. All right, so Dark Witty Man versus Okay. So Okay, so Dark Witty Man here is up material big time <clears throat> let's go back oh 
All right, so curved thing versus full empty pajamas. I think this is the battle for who's gonna be next to play Roper 62. And right now, curved thing is, has a really dominant position here. Look at the knot on the outpost hitting the rook. Double rooks on the file. This knight is not mobile at all. Um, only thing I see is this knight is attacking d4, which he did. But here we can go knight takes. Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be something here. Yeah, I think we can. We win a piece here. So for instance, knight takes d7. If knight takes rook, then you go rook takes e6. Oh, but he goes knight takes b6 first, and that was a mistake. He could have won a piece. It looked like he's still he's still winning a piece here. Full empty pajamas is curved thing. This is gonna be a big upset here. And now you gotta move the knight back here. Maybe he's just gonna get a pawn out of it. So he's gonna have four pawns versus two on this side of the board. So there's gonna be chances for a pass pawn pushed here <clears throat> that could make up for the missing piece if he gets if he starts to push the pawns. Oh, so look at this. Curve thing made a big blunder. Instead of moving the piece, which he should have, he just protects the pawn. And now it's just a uh, even game as far as material is concerned, but uh, I think that black is gonna be a little bit better because he has a chance to pay, push a pass pawn here with D3 in the future. Or maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe actually Knight A4 looks like this pawn is gonna be a problem. Knight A4 is B5, Knight to C5 attacks the B7 pawn. If B6, then Knight D7 attacks the B6 pawn and there's no escape for that pawn. So those pawns, but he's doing it now. <clears throat> and then knight c5 <clears throat> oh man look at curve thing he's playing excellent and knight d7 but if knight d7 there is a rook a8 move I will save that. Question is, do we actually even want... <clears throat> oh, he plays rook e2. So this is a mistake here. All we have to do is play c3 and the rook is stuck. But I guess we can get out after c3, he can play rook c2. And rook c2. And he just saved himself from losing a piece. If he sees rook c2. He does. <clears throat> and take, take. And here I would stop him from escape. Well, I can't stop him from escaping, I guess. Now here curve thing has a4 and this is the pass pawn that's ready to go. He stops a4. <clears throat> and here curve thing is correctly getting his king into the game. I don't know what's getting into curve thing today. He's playing really well. Um that made no sense but curve thing why didn't you step up to protect the pawn? So now it's knight c3 and knight takes a2. Wow. Curve thing played so good, but it, with three minutes and 27 seconds left, made a fast move and a blunder. All this time you have to think, it's no reason to make any fast moves. <clears throat> now, full uh, empty pajamas is using his experience. Got three pawns versus one on this side of the board. Pushing the pawn, ready to play d4 check. d4 check. <clears throat> I will say this pawn here on b5 looks like that's gonna be a problem. <clears throat> oh, he takes another pawn, okay. 
I might push this pawn here because if you take, I push again. And so he just moves there, I see. I don't know if I like that because the pawns are not together. Maybe you can go knight e1, but this is, he brings his king in the game. That's smart. All right, is there any more games here? This is a good game. I think this is an important game. See, we'll challenge for, challenge Roper 62. Left singing toe against Elite Song. Um, looks like, what's happening here? Looks like Elite Song is gonna, is a little bit better here. He has a extra pawn. And this is a potential to be a pass pawn too. <clears throat> he has to just figure out the strategy, maybe bishop d7, rook to b4, and then b5. <clears throat> so he can play a5 a and push the pawn. Probably what he has to do. And they're running low on time. Maybe we'll go back to this game for a second. Yeah, we'll definitely come back to this game because the Elite Song game, they're down to 30 seconds here. So let's look at this game, see what's happening here. They're really low on time. Elite Song is now to... Okay, so he moved here. <clears throat> so he goes with the tactic. He's going to play... See, I don't believe this works, actually. So he's going to push... He's gonna, so if I take, you push, and then I push, and you push, then I'm gonna just, whoa, he moves back here. Oh, that, I don't know about that move. <clears throat> okay, and now can, so now there's gonna be a new passer here. Notice how this bishop dominates the knight. Probably can play f6 here and then bishop to d3, controlling the queen in square. Yeah, he should play bishop d3. He's going to bring his king over, I guess. Maybe bishop to, yeah. Yeah. So now, now you can never ever touch this bishop here. But what Roper, what left uh, singing toe, his plan is to bring his knight to c2. And what's stopping him from doing that? So I guess black wants to bring his king. And so, man, this is an excellent move. Stopping the incursion of black's king to this side of the board while I get my knight to... I need to go to hmm, C1. It's going to be hard. Because I would like to go to D2, but there's only so many places I can go to get to D2. <clears throat> I actually think Roper's, I mean, Elite Song should have played H5 to create a way for his king to come in. Okay, so here, oh, he, he see, left singing toe was trying, he wanted to go to D2 so bad, he didn't even realize that he couldn't go back to F1. And this is mop-up duty now, so Lee Song will win that one. Let's go back to, oh, wait a minute, so who won this game here? Full Empty Pajamas wins that game, so he's four out of six, Tacky Element is four and a half out of six. So, Tacky Element might be the one who's going to challenge next, actually, because he has a higher, um, higher score. And then Roper62 in the toughest tournament ever is six for six. <laughs> oh, man. Roper62 is six for six here, has been undefeated. He's beaten... Two 1900s, 
1700 that's almost 1800 um oh no 1300 1600 1300 i mean just tearing through the field I mean, you're talking about a tournament that has Therese Woods, Aiden Song, Mikhail Garland. And I mean, Aiden, he lost his one game. The only game he lost was to Rover 62. He's second place. But talking about showing up, left singing the, the other visitors, fun classic bicycle. She was three and a half out of six right now. Seventh place. Dark witty, witty witty man is four out of six for fifth place. You see, this is a good opportunity. It's a great opportunity for you guys to prove yourself against these players, and you have. You know, having confidence is important in chess. The things that we learn in balances, those things, if you use those things to the best of your ability, you know, and apply that knowledge to the game, psh, sky is the limit. And hopefully they will come back because I'm pretty sure they have a sour taste in their mouth for losing um, in this game to the Implodians here. So hopefully and the Implodian imps here. So it is one more game. It is Ruddy Puzzle versus Cold Lean Leg. So it's Feiyun. Um, Ruddy Puzzle has a queen for a rook. But to be honest, this is looking like a fortress. Hard to win this game. <clears throat> and I'm noticing that there's a rook that's on pre, which means it's a rook is hanging. The ruddy puzzle, does he want to draw? Now he shouldn't want to draw. He should definitely um, move this rook. <clears throat> no reason to get try to try for a draw. I don't know what his strategy is. Hmm. <clears throat> Here he could have probably went F5, and this is not so clear. Definitely go F5 now. This is not so clear. I'm not depending what white had to do is open up some more of these pawns, trade some of these pawns so you can have more highways, more files and diagonals open to uh, get a trade. Because once you go queen for rook, you should be able to do it. But you still got to watch, watch out for fortresses. Even with a queen and a rook, there's a fortress where if the rook gets to a certain square, the king cannot come to help checkmate the king. So this is um, this is a potential fortress situation. H5. Now what White is threatening to do is to go Rook. Mm, rook A8. And then come to the back rank, but this was an excellent move, Rook B7.
Now here, I don't know if I would have traded here, but maybe, maybe it's fine. Hmm. Now he had rook to b3, which not only stops the, the check, queen d3, but also threatened rook g3 check with a one to pawn. <clears throat> Possibly even more, so that would have been an excellent square for the rook. Oh, now look what he's trying to do. He's trying to go rook h7 and go rook h, the threat of rook h1 check, but I don't believe that's going to be good enough. Look at this. Cold lean leg is playing excellent defense here. Excellent defense. And gets a draw. Wow. Excellent defense, Feiyun. Oh, man. Excellent defense. He's a new Implodian, actually. New Implodian. All right. Nas round. Uh, <clears throat> how did full empty pajamas get to play Roper 62? I wonder how that happened. All right. So, in this, the only one that could beat... Roper 62 happens to be full empty pajamas who has beaten him before. He was top madhouse. He won the first two uh, uh, beat Corona Bliss championships. So he has two under his belt. Roper 62 wins this. He'd be the first to three. Uh, if he loses this, I wonder if he would even, I don't know, Roper 62, if he loses this, would he even... <clears throat> He might be first place anyway because of the tiebreak. Maybe he just can't lose first place at all. And Elite Song is going to have to beat Tacky Element. Have they started? There it goes. Okay. Okay. Here I would just play e4 here and take a space advantage to see. Uh, he trades his really nice bishop for this knight here. Oh man, that's not a good decision there. That bishop was better. Now white has a bishop here. That didn't make any sense there. So let's go to the board one. This is the only person that could beat full Roper 62. Full empty pajamas. Okay. And here, okay. So, yeah, Roper 62. Okay, he's playing his Italian game, looks like. Okay, maybe move like b5, kicking the knight back to e7. Okay, he's going to go to d7 to c5 probably. And here now, <clears throat> you kind of want to stop this bishop g4 move. Well, I guess you don't need to. So you can play rook e1 or knight d2. Or even bishop to b3. He goes bishop to... Okay, so he goes bishop to g5. Maybe h6, bishop h4, and knight bd7. It should, should be fine there. Bishop e6. So this is the point where I was thinking maybe bishop b3, bishop c2. Because now you don't have to trade this piece off. And you should not trade with him. Maybe you go bishop b3, and he's able to go take, and you take with the queen. Or you go knight d2. <clears throat> and take with the knight. That way, you're threatening to win the bishop on b6. This bishop is a really good piece. Maybe knight d2 here. He chooses to go queen b3. 
he wants his queen on c4. Okay. And maybe his plan is, now that the light square bishop is gone, is just to play d4 here and attack the e5 pawn. White is better. Has a nice space advantage here. Maybe knight bd2 first. Yeah. I don't know, rook c8? h6? No, he wants to get the queen out of the way. So h6, bishop h4, <clears throat> and then queen e8, maybe. And rook e1. Right, this is a this is a, a classical struggle here. <clears throat> you have this nice bishop on b6. It's the bad bishop, but it's outside the pawn chain, very active. Henry's bishop is pinning the knight to the queen. All right, so I figure rook c8. You you know want to play c6 here, but actually you can kind of let him play c6 because if he takes, you can take here. But then the pawn on c3 might be a problem. It goes queen b3. <clears throat> c6 or knight c5 might be the move here. <clears throat> knight c5 looks good, but <clears throat> I don't know. I think he could go... Let's see, queen b1. It goes queen d3. I didn't want to go here because <clears throat> the potential of a pin on this file. <clears throat> but looks like it's all right right now. But we wanted to play d4. That's the problem. <clears throat> and if e takes, c takes, we can't do it. But maybe after c6, you can play d4 right away. Yeah. Maybe d4 now. And then, should he go e takes? I don't think so, but he did. So c takes. Okay. He got it in just in time, and actually e5 is coming soon, so Henry is doing really good with the space advantage. After he plays like knight two, he plays knight d7, maybe we move out of the way. Maybe we play, I think it's too quick to play this move here, e5, maybe. He takes on c6 instead, huh? Wow. That might be an okay move because rook takes c6, now we have queen d3. Yeah, and queen d3. Might be a good move. And I think black is just worse here in this position. But it's okay, just a little worse. Okay, so that was an excellent move. Queen c8, now he's threatening rook 2 c3, rook c2. Wonder if we still can play e5 anyway. This is a critical decision from Henry, um, or full empty pajamas here. He's thinking of, he's looking at rook c3 and thinking if he should like dodge it. But I don't believe it's something that he has to dodge right now. Um, after rook c3, he has queen b5. So it's not, not that big of a deal. And then queen c6. So, so I don't like that move. So he... That was not a good move. So now he has to defend his knight with queen b5. Or, oh, he goes queen b1. And so he's retreating. So he did not have to 
uh, respond to that threat. All he had to do is use his own threat of E5. That was much better. <clears throat> but he still has a space advantage. Queen C4 is coming, attacking his knight twice. Is that going to be a problem? <clears throat> it could be. Queen C4, knight D2 maybe. Huh. I don't know if I like that move. But he did take a center pawn. And and then rook takes b3. And then we have queen to d5, right? Which attacks the rook and the d6 pawn. Or even rook c1 first. A lot of stuff you have here. So he played rook c1. I guess he could play rook c3. That's the big problem. That was the problem here. So he had to play queen d5 first. <clears throat> so now I believe black is just winning this game here. He should not trade. Maybe he should go rook b1. That looks better. So rook c to b1. Keep the pieces on the board. Now you're looking at like this bishop is pinned because of the b7 pawn being weak with the queen and the rook on b1. Got a d6 pawn weak. Bishop e7 is a threat in the future. But he trades, and then he's going to have to do something with this rook here. <clears throat> that was a bad trade. <clears throat> you're down in material, so you probably shouldn't trade anyway. <clears throat> and plus, you're up in space, and you shouldn't trade then anyway. So <clears throat> this is a problem with full empty pajamas. The game he had against me... He had a space advantage, but he couldn't resist. He had to trade. Guys, you have to practice keeping the pieces on the board, especially when you have pawn in the center that gives you space. Keeping the pieces on the board. <clears throat> All right, so he is, what's his threat here? I don't see a threat here. I, I like rook b1 a little bit better. Excuse me, I will be right back here. Okay, let's see what's happening here. What did he play? Looks like he's threatening to go queen e7 maybe with bishop d6. Okay. I don't know why. Oh, he's just protecting his pawn. He should have been more active here. <clears throat> oh, and he gets checkmated there. And <clears throat> that's it. Roper 62 has won every game <laughs> in this dirt of it. Every last game here. He's one. <clears throat> Oops. Uh, who's left here? We have Dark Witty Man versus Com Left Singing Toad. This is going to be a battle for what? For one of the top three places, maybe? Let's see. We see Dark Witty Man. Is up a pawn, but it doesn't look easy here. Now it's a knight versus a bishop.
Maybe he plays, yeah. Knight of three, if you take, he's gonna go, let's see. Ooh, it's a nice move here. So he can go knight e5. Come back tomorrow, same time, same place. Period. Get your revenge. And get your revenge. Okay, Dark Witty Man wins the game there. That was Cherise. She 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 wanted to play more rounds. <laughs> But it's over. So Roper 62 is the gold medal winner. Elite Song is number two. Dark Witty Man is third place here. But the story of the tournament is Roper 62. Man, <clears throat> what a player <clears throat> in this tournament. Uh, thank you. It was 23 players. It's going to be the same place, same time tomorrow. Beat Corona Blitz number nine. Let's keep rolling this to see how many championships everyone can get. Hopefully, now it's going to be way more guest stars coming. And then if we get 30, then we can div divvy out prizes. 20, I think I'm going to divvy out a prize anyway. But we can get more and more players. Then maybe we can do a prize or actually make it like a real tournament. That would be fun. And then maybe we even do something even longer or earlier in the day. I'm not sure, but this is all about fun. This was a great tournament. Thank you guys for uh, logging in and playing because um, I know you guys are at home, not in school. So thank you for doing that, keeping uh, up, keeping your skills sharpened. And tomorrow, I'll see you guys later. I'm out.